Hey everybody, it's Sean here on the FM 99's Backstage Pass, presented by Area 51 Tobacco and Novelties, and we all know Lunatic Luau 22 is coming up, uh, presented by Cycle World, your power sports superstore, and gracing the Hardy's main stage on May 20th will be the Pretty Reckless, featuring one Taylor Momsen. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, it's all, uh, trust me, it's our pleasure. We always have a good time with you. Uh, it's funny, we've spoken to you numerous times in the past. Um, I know that one of the more chaotic ones was you were talked with Shelly, and yes. Shelly was attacked by a baby and a dog. She had a lot going on that day. She did have a lot going on. I don't want to get upstage, so I have neighborhood kids that are going to come scream outside my house in a little while, <laughs> and a pack of dogs will come maul me towards the end of the interview. Exactly. So that way, you know, we keep the, the, the theme going. I like it. I like it. <laughs> you know, what's funny is back in 2017, you guys played the Luau previously. Yeah. And you guys were one of the first, like, bands I got to interview. Oh, very cool. And they, oh, they see are, <laughs> <laughs> Which was really, really cool back then. It was, it was, it was, you, I've got to say, you were all incredibly gracious. You were friendly. It was a blast. So okay. it's all good to talk to you again. <laughs> I, 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 we, I joke around because after that, you and I chit chatted a lot and we got along really well. So I told everybody Taylor Momsen was my first celebrity BFF. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and well, it was funny. You, you followed me on Twitter afterwards. Yep. And, that got me inundated with messages from people being like, can you tell Taylor to follow me? <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> no, but maybe yeah. we'll see her next time. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. But it was just funny because the other day I put out a tweet about the Luau and just referenced how I couldn't wait to see you guys there and other bands. And all of a sudden I'm getting a lot of likes on this tweet, a lot of retweets on this tweet. Man, I'm all right. I'm finally catching on on the on Twitter. That's great. And then I look and I realize, oh no, Taylor retweeted it. That's what happened. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's a joint effort. That's I think that's how social media works, right? Absolutely like, right. Absolutely you, right. You retweet me. It's you know, it's mutual love. I just remembered at that moment. I was like, oh, okay, they love her. I got it. Okay, now I remember. <laughs> they love you too. I love you. Oh, oh, I'm gonna need that to be my ringtone. All love. All love. Thank you. Uh, so speaking of which, you have played the Luau before. You've been here. You're familiar with the area. Yes. You know, what does it mean to you to come back and play the Luau again? I mean, is this kind of, you guys have almost, I don't want to say grown up, but as a band, you've kind of, you kind of have in, in front of the Luau crowds. Well, you certainly have. I mean, we've been playing it for years now and it's, we're, I don't even know where to begin. I, it's, it almost feels surreal at this point that we're finally going on tour again. Like there's been so many. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, and everything. So the fact that it's actually finally happening is I don't even know how to contain my excitement. Like it's, we're just so ecstatic. And the lu lunatic, excuse me, lunatic, lunatic Luau is, uh, <laughs> it's just always a great show. The fans are so into it. The, you guys are awesome. It's just, we've always had a blast playing there and uh, we just can't wait to come back. And we got a whole new records worth of material to play. Like it's going to be. Yeah, that we haven't gotten to see. So I'm yeah. really excited about that. Um, when you spoke with Shelly previously, I think you guys were just about to release the album. Yes. And you were you were kind of you were of the mindset. It's weird to be releasing an album and nobody we can't go play it in front of anybody. So weird. It still feels it feels like we put out the record like yesterday and also like 10 years ago at this point. Like yeah. it's, so, it's such a strange dichotomy to not have played and, and toured the record right away. So it's it's kind of interesting because I think it's going to make for a, a different kind of experience because normally, you know, you put out a record and then you, you're immediately on the road with it. And the fact that we've had so much time now not touring, the audience has really had a chance to kind of sit with it and delve into the, the material and the songs. So I think that that's going to make for a really, really fun show where it's new material, but they also know it. So it's familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Be, there won't there won't be that hey this is off our new album you know blah 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 where maybe story. people yeah. yeah so now people will actually know the songs I mean I mean it's an incredibly successful album obviously how would you guys you look back at yourselves in 2017 right that's when uh what it were no who are you selling for was out mm -hmm. right yeah hugely successful album obviously people you know loved it it's all right <laughs> it did okay it did okay um and then you look ahead to now where you've got death by rock and roll and everything, huge success. How do you think you guys as a band and you personally have changed since then? Well, I mean, that's a loaded question that I could go in so many different directions. I think that, I mean, the, the obvious answer is just we're older. I'm older. You know, we've been yeah. doing this for almost for over a decade now, which is crazy to think about. So I think that that kind wow, of- Wow, that just made me feel old. Holy I know, it makes me feel old too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so old. Um, so I think, that, you know, that's kind of the first obvious thing to say, but, it, but in, you know, age comes hypothetically wisdom, you know, all those things. But I think that just having, 
I don't know, we've been through a lot of personal turmoil and tragedy. And I think that throughout all of that, it really kind of brought us all, we all kind of did our own things for a while there, dealing with our own personal crap. But we came back together and I think that that, that cre it created even a stronger unit than we even had before, which is kind of hard to say because we're like a big family, but we've now been in rehearsals for like six months straight, just playing every day. Like it's really become this type of group. It, it always was, but even more so on this kind of new level now that I think really shows on stage. Like I think that the audience will notice that like we're very, we're very relaxed, I, I think is the biggest thing. And we've kind of all settled into ourselves and into the music and, and it's just very, it's a lot of fun. Like we're looking, we're looking, we've all been through so much crap that it's like, yeah, this is, this is rock and roll. It's meant to be fun. And even if you're playing songs that, you know, were written from a very heavy period in my life or whatever, that rock and roll is still fun at the end of the day. And that's what this is about. And that's what it's meant to be. And I think that we're really in a good headspace and we're looking to bring that energy to around the country. <laughs> I got to tell you, being able to come out of the last two years in a good headspace is it's crazy. Hugely right? important. Yeah. <laughs> Hugely important. I think we've all had our ups and downs. I certainly like I lost my mind, got it back, lost it again, got it back. It's like a good four times back and forth. But uh no, now we're just we're we're ready to move forward and like I think the rest of the world is and just get out there and fucking crank and turn up <laughs> and scream into microphones and, and see everyone again in person and not this digital facade we all have going on. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. I'm if I never have to do another Zoom call me right? anything in my life that would be <laughs> fantastic be although i will say one one of the benefits that i hope we keep after um the pandemic and everything was that we had allowed us to start doing things like this mm -hmm. where even though you're where are you right now are you in la are you, or are you well i'm in new york you're in new york okay so yeah. still fancy just the other side yeah, um, i call it fancy but it's uh... <laughs> I love New York. I love New York. It's so I've been in Maine for so long. It's so good to finally be back. Like, right. You get tired of Stephen King characters and decided to go back to New York. I love Stephen King. I love all that. You know, it's great for writing. But, you know, once we finished the album, we were supposed to go on tour in 2020. And then the pandemic happened and we just got stuck. And it just felt safe. Yeah. Better than in yeah. The city. And, but I miss the energy so much. So, so I feel like life has just been breathed into me again by being back here. It's pretty fantastic uh, getting, back, getting back to where you're comfortable. And, you know, one of those places, like you said, being the stage. Uh, you talk about this new album. By the way, I saw when I was doing a little research earlier today, randomly saw a Good Morning America article about you, <laughs> and it was which I just didn't expect. And um, one of the things that came up was it was the Good Morning Good Morning America 50 Best Albums of 2021, and you guys were on that list. That's, that's very good. And I was like, that's pretty cool. You know, it's always neat to see the bands. I work at a rock station, so mm -hmm. it's neat to see the bands that I like make that list. You know what I mean? Because well, normally. Good. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, it's okay. It's, it's going to be people like, not surprisingly, Billie Eilish or yeah. um, like uh, Adele was on there, of course. Lil Nas X. Then there were some other ones that kind of jumped out at me. Garbage put out a new album in 2021. Mm -hmm. um, Duran Duran put out a new album mm -hmm. in 2021 that was apparently very good. A lot of music 2021. Yeah, well, I think people had a lot of stuff to get out. I think and, so. um, you know, Billie Eilish, no shock. I mean, she had a huge album, huge successful couple of years for her. But just what is it? Is it kind of gratifying to be once upon a time, if you were accepted by mainstream, it kind of you lost rock cred. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nowadays, it kind of doesn't feel that way. It feels like almost like rock is kind of. I want to say coming back around, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, to be in, in the public eye and being a form of music that people really gravitate to, because for a while, I won't lie, it went, it, we were on the downside. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. You know, hip hop and pop music were at the top. Rock okay. was way down. Yeah. And now I feel like we're starting to make that turn again where we're starting to see more rock bands getting attention mm -hmm. and one of them being you guys. So what does it feel like to be kind of in that public eye, like not just for the rock community, but in general? It feels incredible. It feels a little surreal, I think, because I, I say that, I mean, I'm, I repeat myself so much in interviews because it's true. It's like you, when you ma I make a record, I make it for me. You put it out in the world. You hope people like it, but it's really not something that you focus on or think about too much. It'll drive you crazy. Yeah. And so then when to see something that you've worked so hard on, and you know, slaved over and is so precious, be received so well, not only from your hardcore fan base, but from, you know, outside people who may not have heard you before. It's just yeah. so humbling and so it's just so cool. Like it's so great. Cause you know, as a songwriter and as, as a musician, your goal is to get, have people hear your music at the end of the day. And, you know, hopefully they like it, but you can't, you can't control that side of things. You just want people to hear it. And 
anytime you put out an album and it's received positively and then crossing into something more on those lines, it's not just in the niche side of rock and roll, which is, is amazing because rock and roll shouldn't be niche. Like I think rock and roll, it's always been on the underground and that's what makes it cool. Like mm -hmm. rock and roll has always been on the underbelly of, of music and it has its moments where it shines. Um, but that's what makes it awesome. So yeah, yeah I agree. <laughs> but, I, but it also needs to have that recognition because I've been saying for years that rock is just, you know, it's just waiting for its next resurgence. It's yeah, it's without a doubt. Right now, it's not dead. Like it can't die. Rock and roll is the epitome of everything. It's, it's yeah. the base of, of all music. It comes, you know, comes from the blues. So I think that the fact that we're starting to see a resurgence and we're thankfully a part of that in some kind of way is just absolutely amazing. I have always thought that uh, there's way too much of this the uh, the sub genreing and, and all this different stuff people do like oh it's this kind of right you know they only listen to black metal or they only listen yeah. to Norwegian death metal or they only whatever it is and to me I've always in you know in high school I was like that but as an adult in my you know, thirty um it's one of those things where uh, music's music music's music you know it's my, a good song yeah it's exactly right ever be cool you know <laughs> that list I was reading to you before with Billie Eilish and Adele and Little Nas X. There's a solid chance that if I'm if I'm my music is on shuffle, it's gonna go from like Metallica, uh, The Pretty Reckless, Little Nas X, sure. uh, maybe Adele Rolling in the Deep comes on after that, something like that. I music's music, and I think all of it's good, and I don't think there's anything wrong with the world embracing it, no matter what it is. I mean, look what the Beatles did. I mean, they took the world by storm even though they were technically that rock genre. No, I mean, the Beatles are the perfect example of what rock and roll is, I think. It's just, they, you know, from genre to genre, they were, you know, always a rock band, but they they covered everything. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> the spectrum is just absolutely insane. And I think that's, you know, the Beatles were my first love and, and why I, I fell in love with rock and roll in, in the first place. But that's because they did everything. And rock and roll yeah. is so there's no limitations to it. And I think that's what I love about it so much is that it, it encompasses everything. It, it is, it's blues, it's rock, it's obviously rock, but it's blues, it's jazz, it's folk, it's pop, it's hip hop, it's all those things. And, and it just kind of fits under this umbrella of pure self-expression with guitars. Because like I said, guitars are just awesome. <laughs> They're never, yeah. you know, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Um, you, you and I actually had a conversation online. I remember this. It was after we had spoken at the Luau in 2017. You and I spoke when Chris Cornell passed away. Uh, I had messaged you because you had put out something very sweet about him. And I had messaged you because he was an idol to me. Yeah. Uh, musically, I, I've been singing in bands my whole life, and he was a guy that I just looked up to. Yeah. And so I just messaged you saying that was really cool, and I appreciate it. And we, you and I talked a little bit about him. And can I just say, several of the singles off this new album, which all of them are great, but it really hit me because like they're just so good because they they feature like you've got one with Tom Morello, which mm -hmm. I still think Audio Slave is one of the most criminally underrated bands ever in existence. Oh, so great. And you have another one with Matt and uh, Kim from Soundgarden, yeah, which is your more recent single, Only Love Can Save Me Now, which actually just an acoustic version I'll talk about in a minute. <laughs> um, but I just it was so cool to me that you had those little subtle touches, you know, just those, those homages to Soundgarden and to Audio Slave, just by having those guys there. And they kind of, I don't know, it just, I don't know, it, it touched me as a Soundgarden fan, as a Chris Cornell fan. I know it meant a lot to you because you've talked about at length, you yeah. and Tom Morello and all them kind of becoming closer after Chris had passed. Yeah. Um, but it, it allowed you to work with some people you hadn't worked with before and really make some cool music. Um, you've worked with them, you worked with, you worked with Amy Lee on Amy Lee on Use My Voice, mm -hmm. who I spoke to her previously. She has nothing but wonderful things to say about you. She she's loves so, you. She's so sweet. I love her. She's the best. She's an absolute sweetheart. Um, you've worked with her. You worked with this one shocked me. The Almond Brothers band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Warren Haynes. And Warren Haynes. Yeah, Warren Haynes. I was just like, what? There's so much there that is like just so creative and awesome to see you get to work with all these different people and like you said you've been doing this for over a decade right which sounds like a long time but really when you look at the scope of how much you've accomplished and all the people you've worked with isn't that long no it's um not. <laughs> you've accomplished so much in a very short period of time and i keep thinking to myself there's got to be more coming like is there anybody that's on your pie your radar that you want to work with that you never have or like maybe a dream person to work with yeah i mean i always get weary answering that question directly because to me it's well, direct, whatever. I have an answer, but because to me, collaborations, especially in this modern paradigm, I feel like collaborations can be very 
very overdone and just and kind mm -hmm. of for the sake of a marketing tool or something and not from an artistic place to begin with. Yeah. So for me, a collaboration, it starts with the song. It's like, you know, when Only Love Can Save Me Now came around, I had written that song and I went, who would play this to, the, to its full potential? Who would make this song as good as it can be? And it had a very Soundgarden-esque feel to it. And I was like, well, got to call Matt and Kim. And, and you know, thankfully he said yes. And so that's kind of how all of those things, all of the, the people I've worked with over the years has come about. So it's hard to define directly like, well, I'm going to write a song for blank blank and reach yeah, out. Right. But there are the couple like bucket list, bucket list people like, you know, Jimmy Page, I'm coming for you at some point. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I'm, I'm a huge Oasis fan. So we and the Knoll are certainly on that on that short list. But uh, but, you know, the song has to come first. So <laughs> when you <laughs> we do this all the time, um, there was a, a news story we talked about on our on our show, Rumble in the Morning, where these people got stuck in a pub because uh, I think it snowed. Mm -hmm. And they were stuck there for three days or something. And they were stuck there with an Oasis tribute band. Oh, oh boy. That's and a so, <laughs> Yeah. Well, we, we just, we became this running joke on the show where now whenever things get awkward or tense, somebody just goes, anyway, here's Wonderwall. And, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. I'm going to steal that. Like in, in, when things get, there's an awkward moment. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. That would be amazing. I That would be a fantastic. <laughs> I've never lived that down. That would be totally amazing. That. that would be great. Um, but in any event, um, it's just been so cool. And yeah, I know it's hard to, to give answers like that. Because like you said, I understand the music needing to fit. The well, person needs well, to fit the music, not the other way around. You don't write yeah. the music for the person. Well, yeah, because it's, it's more, it's like I write a song for myself and then I go, mm -hmm. okay, is there someone outside of this core unit of our band that could do, that could bring something to the table that we're not going to deliver ourselves right. or you know, bring another element outside of it? And so that's really what you wait for. And, so, you know, that's what happened with, with Warren Haynes is, you know, we wrote the song Back to the River and then it was just this long jam session. And I was like, well, this needs a shred and slide solo. Like... I was like, Ben, I mean, you can do it. Or we could call one of the best slide players in the world um, and see if, he, see if he's interested. And so, you know, you reach out and if, and if, they, if they're into it, then fantastic. And if not, then we figure out how to do it ourselves. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't doubt that you have the ability to do it yourselves, but I also don't see a lot of people saying no these days. Um, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it's kind of a so, benefit. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So we're looking forward to it. You're going to be here on May 20th on the Hardy's main stage. You're going to be up yeah. there. You're going to be rocking. You're going to be having a great time. Um, you talked about it before. It's been so long since you guys have really been able to play live and see people and do things. Did you pick up any new skills during the last two years? When you were, did you learn to make bread? Did you? <laughs> no, I wish I did. Um, I played a lot. No, of you just wrote an awesome album. That's yeah, all you did. <laughs> make some videos. Tried to figure out how to do that in COVID. Uh, and no, I played a lot of guitar. That's what I did. And. In, in, quarantine um played a lot of guitar got, got a little better so that's that's good that's a good that's, thing yeah. my checklist hey, you were already pretty good so it's you know. yeah, i'm an okay guitar player I, I use guitar playing more as a as a tool to write songs than i'm not i get that I, i'm not trying to take solos anytime soon i'll leave that for the professionals right. um, totally get it. but uh but no i got a little better at guitar i'm now wishing i like picked up knitting or something like some sort of hobby for all the long bus rides that are we're gonna come up now because i need some sort of something something oh, else. yeah man you should well you know it's never too late for something like knitting it's not like that's right i don't think you have to i don't think that's a age defined skill I, yeah i don't think it's an age defined <laughs> skill and i and i don't think anybody's gonna look at you like all elitist and hipster like oh i was knitting before it was cool or, you know it's <laughs> like you know maybe make a blanket or something yeah exactly know. right there you go make a guitar koozie i don't know something yeah, sure. make a new it'll be a new thing i'll be you know, uh, is there anything, you know, I'd even reference, reference it at the top of the uh, interview. Is there anything you you started doing or had to change in your behavior during the pandemic that you think you're going to keep now that the world's kind of somewhat opening back up? It's like, for me, I'll be honest with you, if I'm going into large crowds in a small place, probably still wearing a mask. Yeah, no, I, I think that's just something I'm going to do from now on. I think it's just smart. I mean, first of all, like, you know, the whole world kind of freaked out over the mask thing. And I they've clearly never been to Japan. Like when we first went to Japan, they're wearing masks all the time. And this was, you know, no pandemic or anything. It's just kind of a common courtesy thing. And mm -hmm. I picked that up from Japan because as a singer on tour, I get so, I'm kind of a hypochondriac and I get freaked out about getting sick. Because if you get sick on the road, you, can, you never fully recover. Like you can plow through right. the shows, but like you're never 100% until you actually stop again. 
and take the time off, which sucks. So I was, I was flying with masks and all that stuff beforehand. And now it's just kind of, especially in the winter, I kind of love it. It's like a face warmer. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Happen. Yes. It's like an advertised thing. It's changed the, change the perception of masks. And it's a, it's a, it's a new fashion statement. It keeps my nose warm. It keeps my nose warm. Not only that, um, I've never been known as the Adonis of my family. So when I can do this and just talk and all you see are my pretty eyes and I talk, I'm, you know, a 10. But the, you know, it's... I <laughs> no, it's just, you don't have to worry about makeup. It's fucking... Right. It's exactly. I hate having to worry about my makeup. <laughs> it's um, of course, you know. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just one of the things that I'll probably keep after all this goes back. Because again, it feels so nice to finally be able to say... We're doing something. We're going to see you guys on May 20th. I'm very excited about that prospect. I remember when we saw the lineup, the first name that popped out of me was like, oh, I get to see I get to see the Pretty Reckless again. And I'm going to see my, my celebrity BFF Taylor. It's going to be so much fun. I missed my I missed you. I miss my BFF. We missed the crowd. We missed the whole show, the whole thing. It's going to it's be, gonna so be awesome. a blast. Again, that's May 20th, by the way, folks. If you haven't already gotten your tickets, make sure you do so. It's the Lunatic Lou House presented by Cycle Ward, your power sports superstore. Real quick, before I let you go, a couple of um, fun you questions. Oh, so well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it, was so, it was so smooth. It's almost like that's my job. It's almost like you're a professional. <laughs> um, a couple of quick questions I wanted to throw at you before you go. Uh, okay, so the first one, there is a right answer here. Okay. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Uh, generally no, but can be good. So I'm going to go ahead and point this out here. I've been doing that question since the pandemic started. Yeah. Just to have fun questions. Not a single person has answered yes. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm like a, I'm pretty basic. I'm a New York, you know, New York yeah. slice kind of girl. Yep. I'm like, with you. When you get to one of those fancier places that's always kind of in the middle of nowhere and they have some sort of fancy pie situation going on, it can be good. It's never my go-to, but it's all right. Right, but I but I just want to point out that nobody so far. This is a tally. I'm, I'm I've been keeping score That's since crazy. this thing started, That's and crazy. nobody has said yes. Nuts. I mean, isn't pineapple and pizza pretty common? Am I wrong on that? It's pretty common here, apparently, but not everywhere. Okay. I did see an amazing video where they went to Italy and substituted like little Italian grandmas ordered pizzas, and they substituted their pizzas for Italian for pizzas with pineapple on them. <laughs> And they threw a fit. Sure. Well, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like New York. It'd be blasphemy yeah. with pineapple on a New York. Exactly. Guy. Yeah. <laughs> but it made me laugh because one one little old lady was like throwing stuff at the guy. Was... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So next one. I don't know if you were much of a gamer growing up. No. No. Okay. So you no. never really played Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter or anything. No. I uh, see. Then you want to have a preference. Of... No, I'm not gonna. No, I played a little bit of like Sonic the Hedgehog when I was like on the old Saga player but that's about it not really a video game person you mean sega sega yeah, yeah. Saga? You said saga sega it's been a minute man i can't tell that you don't play video games um <laughs> it's no big deal it's you know it's fine um guilty pleasure movie guilty pleasure movie i don't know if i really have a guilty pleasure movie i have like i, lo I watch a lot of comedies especially getting ready for tour so like mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know, Get Him with the Greek is always on that list. It's hilarious. So good. Uh, you know, Blues Brothers, Spinal Tap. like the Oh, dude. <laughs> Spinal Tap. You're speaking my language. Yeah, get in the mood for, uh, for you the need that. You need that little extra <laughs> push over the cliff. You just turn it up to 11. Yeah, you know, it's just, oh, it's that little twist. Little twist. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just make 10 higher and make 10 the highest? Please <laughs> so go to good. 11. <laughs> so good. It is very good. Yeah, for me, it's just it, whenever I think of a guilty pleasure movie, it's something that like if I show it to somebody else, they're gonna be like, "What the hell are we watching?" Oh, yes, um, I don't really have anything. What's yours? Oh, uh, there's a terrible, terrible movie called Bird Demic. I don't think I know that movie. No, yeah. you don't. I promise you. Um, and it is one of the worst movies ever made, and somehow also amazing. Amazing. Yeah, guy thought he was making like a new version of The Birds meets like uh, an Inconvenient Truth or something, and it is. Yeah. Horrible and amazing, yeah. and I can't. I've watched it so many times now. <laughs> well, I need to check it out. I need a new movie. I've like, yeah, you, I've seriously. Exhausted television and TV and movies at this point. Just be prepared for terrible, and then yeah. let me know what you thought about it afterwards. I love it. I'm I'm down for a good terrible movie. <laughs> okay, deal. Final part here. You've told me this before because we talked about it last time I spoke to you. I remember this. In 2017, I asked you what was the weirdest thing a fan had done for you, and you said they gave you a comic book that was oh, really inappropriate. Book. Yes. That yes. Was that was a unique experience. I do remember that story. So I want to flip the script this time and ask you, what's the best thing a fan has ever done for you? Oh, man. Um, or even if you can't, I, we'll do it this way so we can be, be you know, play, play, play nice with everybody. 
not definitively the best, but one of the really nice things a fan has done for you? I mean, I, there's been so many different encounters over the years that it's hard to pinpoint just one. I mean, I think in a very, this might sound silly because it's so general, but I think the nicest thing fans can do for me, for the band, for anyone is support your artist. And when you go to a show and you're singing along, like it's just the coolest feeling. It's so, like, that's, that's what fans can do for me. Sing along, be into it, be in the moment with me on stage. And like, that's, we're creating a moment together. And I think that that's yes. so cool. And that's, that's how, like, I feel like fans always ask, like, you know, do you remember me or do you, do you remember from last time? And it's like, well, I meet a lot of people. There's a lot of faces, but right. that collective moment of the shows, you're a part of that. And I remember that. I'll remember right. that the day I die. So I feel like that's, that's the coolest thing fans can do. It's just, it's just be in it, <laughs> you know, so like, put down your phone and sing with Taylor and be in the moment and have exactly a right. So if I see any phones, the little... <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but seriously, make a memory together, you know. Exactly right. Make a memory together at the Luau. So basically, if you haven't already, you need to be listening to Death by Rock and Roll, the album. Yes. Learn all the songs and be ready because you've had plenty of time to get ready. May twentieth at the Lunatic Luau on the Hardy's main stage, you are going to see the Pretty Reckless with Taylor Momsen, and uh, we're all going to have a great time. It's Thank you so fun. much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's going to be so much fun. Yeah, I'm really looking <laughs> forward to it. It'll be awesome. great. Well, thank you again. It has been the FM 99 Backstage Pass presented by Area 51 Tobacco and Novelties. I'm Sean. That's Taylor. And we're out of here. Thanks.